Well, Singapore is developing Asia's first allergic rhinitis database. The condition commonly known as hay fever is triggered by allergens such as dust, pollen and pet dander. Our project antenna will be led by Ng Teng Fong General Hospital with the support of several other hospitals and the Agency for Science, Technology and Research or ASTAR. Allergic rhinitis is a condition that affects 39% of Singaporeans, symptoms might be similar to that of a common cold. But unlike the cold, allergic rhinitis symptoms typically happen suddenly and can also end abruptly. The mucus produced will be clear instead of a greenish or yellowish coloration. Project Antenna is already tracking up to 6,000 patients to help guide clinical decisions and chart how Asian allergies are different from Caucasian allergies. Now, we want to find out more, of course, and we have the Principal Investigator, Adjunct Associate Professor Ng Chiu Lip, Senior Consultant at Ng Teng Fong General Hospital, and Ryan Lim. He is a student who suffers from allergic rhinitis. Thank you both so much for coming in today. Uh, first to you, Prof Ng, uh, I, I'd like to know why the need to create this Asia First database and how are you collecting the data for it? <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Uh, you know, internationally, there is a shortage of good, quality, long-term mm. data for this very prevalent condition, especially in Singapore. And uh, most data cu currently comes from uh, you know, Europe mm. and America. So there is a, an, an urgent need for Asia to have our own data, to understand our own population. So we're collecting this data uh, at an intensity that I think is uh, uh, you know, uh, not widely seen in other parts of the world. On a weekly basis, we're collecting data from patients, uh, how their symptoms are, compliance data. Uh, we're going to compile this together with uh, uh, clinical data, like from electronic medical records, from laboratory tests, and we are going to do biomolecular studies on selected subgroups of patients. So this will all contribute into a, a large-scale, uh, robust database uh, that will continuously grow. Mm. Uh, and, and, and now with three healthcare clusters in Singapore all coming together to contribute yeah. data, uh, we are hopeful that it will shed some light on this uh, condition. Well, it sounds like you have a lot of power behind this uh, project with the, the three uh, bodies there. But, you know, the, the Asia-specific data is important, as, as you, you told us. But what is the prevalence mm. of... Uh, sinus or hay fever, whatever you'd like to call it. Tell us about our local Asia environment or the genetics that might be different from other parts of the world. Right. Uh, it is very prevalent in Singapore and in cities like Singapore. Yeah. There is something known as hygiene hypothesis where it's more common in places, in cities, especially clean cities. Right. Uh, and, and we know that, uh, you know, genetically there's, there, there are differences between uh, 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 Caucasians and Asians. Mm. And as a result of that, our immune response to allergens differ. And the immune pathways that follow after our cells are exposed to allergens would differ as well. Mm. As a result of that, we know that some drugs work better for uh, Caucasians uh, and not so good for Asians and mm. vice versa. So therefore, uh, but now most drugs are actually developed in the West. Mm. So I think there is a need to develop uh, a, a personalized uh, Asian targeted therapies uh, in this very prevalent disease. And the first step to doing that is really profiling and understanding yeah. our patients uh, our population better. Overdue, if you ask me, yeah, to personalise it. And who knew there was a downside to being too clean, huh? <laughs> so, uh, Ryan, I want to bring you into this conversation because, you know, you are the one that actually has to live with this on a day-to-day -day basis. When did you first realise that you had allergic rhinitis and how did that condition manifest day-to-day -day in your life? Yeah, so uh, I knew about my condition maybe like a year ago, mm. but this condition has existed throughout my entire life as well. Only other, like, further research, I understood that I actually had allergic rhinitis, which led me to want to seek further treatment. So for the day-to-day -day life, right, it can come across like um, blocked nose, mm. runny nose, and uh, most of the time since I had a debated septum, only half of my nostril was yeah. able to breathe. Yeah. So imagine only having 50% of your lung capacity being able to be used. I think it can be quite uh, difficult for everyone. Very difficult. It makes sports difficult. Or, oh, yeah, or definitely, strenuous. definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, listening to those stories, it's so important, Dr. Ng, that we use this database to help doctors tailor treatment or even predict uh, allergic flare-ups if <clears throat> possible for patients like Ryan. Yeah. Is that what the next step is? That's right. So uh, currently, uh, because of the AI component mm. in the database, we are able to, uh, you know, because of the robust data that's mm. coming in, uh, we can 
predict uh, what the patient is going to happen, what's going to happen to the patient uh, over the next three months. So when a patient comes in to see us, we can predict what the patient will react, how, how they will react and what will happen to the patient over the next three months because of all the data that's coming in. And we compare patients to, 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 to other patients with similar demographics, mm -hmm. uh, similar compliance to medications and similar biomolecular profile. So that's the whole idea. And with uh, a, a, a growing database, the prediction will get more and yeah. more And accurate. you communicate this to the patient. That's right. So oh. because of that, uh, yeah. so in the past when a patient comes in, we'll ask, oh, how's your nose? Oh, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Uh -huh. You know, do you use your medicine? Uh -huh. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. But now we have granular data on, uh, you know, uh, symptom trends of the patient, <coughs> how they're doing. And at the same time, uh, how compliant they are to mm, medications. Right. The chatbot would also prompt patients when they are not as compliant uh, okay. to medications. So it's, is, a, it's a chatbot? It is. It, it is. is. And yeah. it, what, you get a, a message? Yeah. How does do. it work? So we get a weekly and money message. Uh -huh. So it will contain a form SG link. So I'll just click on the link uh -huh. and then they'll ask me two simple questions regarding my symptom score and asking me how many times did I miss my medication this week. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and has it been working for you? I mean, does it keep you disciplined about it? Uh, how do you feel communicating with this? Uh, you know? uh, yeah, I think it's a good thing. Uh, by, uh, by asking a simple question like uh -huh. how severe are your symptoms, you know, let's say it's like really bad, mm. um, it prompts me to really want to seek further treatment and asking me like how many times I miss my medication this week reminds me to be more compliant to my medicine and makes me more aware of my condition as well, yeah. Okay, uh, that, that's great. And, and WhatsApp is, of course, the choice of yeah. the generation in yeah. terms of communicating socially, right? Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm asking, uh, also curious about um, the potential to expand what you're doing now for allergic rhinitis to other diseases and, and even beyond the shores, becoming maybe a regional resource here in Singapore. That's right. So we built this platform to be uh, replicable and scalable mm -hmm. for other chronic diseases as well. We're testing it out and on a, te on a, on a, on a, a, a condition that is uh, relatively safe, allergic rhinitis. We will expand it to asthma, which mm. is the next uh, airway disease, uh, very important, very prevalent as well. Uh, and there are plans to expand it to dementia, uh, stroke and other uh, chronic diseases as well. And uh, because Singapore, Singapore is well resourced to do this, we have digital, we are connected, yeah. uh, our technology is pretty good, uh, but we are small. Right. So even with 6,000 patients, I think we can do better. Mm. And therefore, we are working with regional partners uh, in <laughs> Southeast Asia and even the south of China to contribute data to this database so that we can then have a better profile of the whole Asian population and therefore benefit more people. Okay, we really appreciate the two of you coming in today and uh, telling everyone out there about uh, what you're doing in this space. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I've been speaking there <laughs> with Adjung Associate Professor Ng Chiu Lip from uh, the Ng Teng Fong General Hospital and Ryan Lim, who is a patient with allergic rhinitis.